Greetings and welcome to what is Naruto Ultimate Ninja Blazing. This is a game that was quite literally released uh, yesterday morning, I believe, in the Americas. It's been out for about a week in Australia and Europe, I think. So now that it's finally here, we finally get a chance to look at it, play it, and see how it plays compared to other games like Dokkan Battle and Treasure Cruise, and see if it's going to have any longevity to it whatsoever. So without further ado, let's get to talking. So the first thing you'll notice here is that it's very similar to, well, technically Dogen Battle, in that you've got your main screen there where you select where you want to go on the story, and you're going to head on to events, and this mysterious thing that I have no idea what it is because it is not implemented yet according to the message I saw yesterday. Oh, it is implemented! I have no idea what this is. Now, as you can see right there, it is not available right now. Now, this seems to be like a challenge tower of sorts, similar to the one that was available in Pokemon. No idea how difficult it's actually going to be because the game just came out. But anyway, let's let's go first down here to the menu and explain to you what everything is, show you, and then later on in the video into actual combat to show you how it actually plays, because it is definitely different to every other game I've seen. So first, your team menu here, you have your team setup enhanced, awaken just like in Dokkan Battle, release is I believe your sell off uh, characters you don't want, character list is quite literally your character list. Now, unfortunately, it does follow the One Piece Treasure Cruise format in that the awakening materials you need to awaken your characters, which are those scrolls you see there, take up character slots. This is not something I particularly agree with, but it's what we've been dealt, so it's what we have to deal with. Other than that, we also have Encyclopedia, which has notes on every single character you have or have played with. That is, you own it or uh, one of your friends or allies has joined it. And you can click on the characters to see their stats, their skills, and their ultimate ability. Now, you may see here in skills what is called a field skill and a buddy skill. Now, field skills are skills that have an AoE around them, and whenever an ally gets within that area, they get the benefit of that skill, depending on how far or how close they are. Buddy skill is what I'm going to explain in a little bit once we actually get to team composition. So, let's head on back. So first, team composition or team setup. Now, as you can see, it follows the standard formula of grab X number of your own characters and then pick a friend to finish it up. Now, as you can see here, it says front row and back row. Now, this is what I was telling about the buddy skill. Now, the buddy skill is going to activate whenever they are in the back row and it's going to benefit the person that is in front of them. Now, in Choji's case right here, if you go to his skills, his buddy skill is boost attack by 70%. So that means whenever uh, Shugaku is in, on the field and Choji is not, Shugaku will have a bonus to 70 attack to his own attack. Now, if, say, Shugaku is on the field and people are next to him, his field skill is boost attack by 70 to 140. So allies that are relatively next to him will get a attack boost. Now, it's, it isn't just a random attack and defense boost. There's also st stuff like Hinata here, who has reduces enemies' chance to counter by 9 to 18%, and boost critical rate by 1.75% and other interesting stuff like that. Now the game uses a system very similar to Dokkan Battle in that every character has an individual uh, chakra gauge and when it fills up they can use their ultimates but we'll show you that once we actually get there. Now enhancements. They, here they are following the Treasure Cruise standard of ways of doing as well in that the only way to actually level up characters is to sacrifice other characters or specific items to them. So here, as you can see, the only item I currently have to sacrifice is this thing right here. Now, not only does he give a little bit of experience and will give more experience to the characters of its same type, but it also gives a small attack boost. Now, currently, uh, what is your name? Sakon, I believe? Is it? Yeah, now, currently, as you can see, Sakon has a strength bonus of plus 30 and I believe Shukaku is already at plus 50? Sh Shikaku is already at plus 50. Now the plus 50 is in yellow because it is telling me that that is the maximum this character can currently have. Now if you awaken them now that number will probably go up. Unfortunately Shikaku is, o is a 3 star character that I awakened into a 4 star character so that is basically going to be his limit. So we could give it to uh, Sakon there or we could give it to somebody else. Now, I haven't awakened Sakon yet, so he is a naturally a 4-star character that would go up to a level 5. So let's give it to him. This is that he'll get a little bit of extra experience and a small attack boost. So there we go. As you can see, his boost is going to go up from by 4, I believe? 
Not really sure. They Unfortunately, the items themselves do not tell you what the bonus is. So there we go. Small experience, small attack boost, and we're basically done. Now, let's talk about this screen right here. As you can see, each character has a health and a... Well, their health and their strength parameters there. The health pool is just exactly like it is in Dragon Ball Z Dokken Battle, in that it's summed up and you have a general health pool for every character, and CPI opponents have individual health pools for every character. Now, luck, I believe, is critical chance, I think. And the range, as you can see, there are three different ranges. There are short, hurt, medium, and long. And usually, characters with longer range have lower attack relative. For example, if we look at... <coughs> When you tell you here, you will see that she has a long range, but her attack is actually lower at 209. Now, if we go to someone with a short range that is about her level, let's see, what about you? You're also level 1. His is short, but he starts at 230. So that is usually the difference there. Oh yeah, and I also forgot to mention uh, their hidden or latent abilities. Now, as you can see, right there, right below the compass that is next to the lock on the right side, you will see these right here. These are their passive abilities that are need to be unlocked by sacrificing copies of the exact same character to the character. So in order to unlock these, I had to sacrifice three other Hakus to him in order to unlock those abilities. That was a little bit easier said than done because he is a strike character, which I'll talk about in a second. And that really is all there is to it. Now let's go on over to the Awakening menu right here. Now this is very similar to every other game that has an Awakening system. In that characters need to be at their current max level before you can awaken them. As you can see, Shugaku can no longer be awakened because he's already been awakened once. So if we look at Sakon here, I do... Let's see, I need uh, one of each of those things, I believe, but my level is not high enough in order to allow me to awaken. And there's obviously a Rio, aka silver or money cost, and stuff like that. So I, I cannot awaken anybody right now. So I'm currently awakening on Sakon and on Hinata there. But that is really all there is to it. Now, release, as I said, is how you get rid of characters. Characters and complete before you look at. So, let's head on over to the summoning menu. Now, this is going to be very similar to the way Dokum Battle does things. So, as you can see, because the game was just released, we are being given a promotion that three times only we can do a multi summon for 30 what are being called dra uh, Ninja Pearls instead of, the, of 50. This is literally the exact same system that Dragon Ball Z Dokum Battle uses. And there are actually some worthwhile characters like like Kakashi or Sasuke. And you can look at the entire character list by pressing the details here. So as you can see, there are a lot of characters, so it's absolutely worth doing it. Now let's look for somebody that I already have. Let's see. Apparently, their Hayate is a four-star character. Uh, now I do have Hayate. Now, unfortunately. Where are you? No, not you. Where is my character list? Let's see, here you... there you are. Now, as you can see, he is only a 3-star character. So, I think that the details page lists them in their maximum level? Maybe? I think. Now, something that I that I have noticed is that some people are... have already awakened characters like Kakashi and Sasuke all the way up to 6 stars. I have no idea how this is done. I have no idea if very specific characters have a double awakened, which is possible. But it's probably going to be a little bit before the entire list is populated with who can do what. But other than that, you, there's also the friend point summon here. So that's the, that's the regular pull with the chance to pull Haku there. And this is your standard friend summons, which you're going to do for leveling fodder and so on and so forth. Now, the good news is that from what I've seen, even friend, uh, well, even the characters you get from here, which are three star and so on and so forth, have a possibility of being useful in battle because of the element system that is implemented in the game. Now this element system is basically as important as it is in Dragon Ball Z Dokken Battle, which we're going to see in a little bit. So let's head on over to the shop because there is a real life money shop, obviously. Here you can purchase ninja pearls, which is how you summon things, recover stamina, recover phantom castle stamina that we have, still have no idea how it's going to work, expand character list, expand your friend list, so on and so forth. And finally, let's head on over to our friend menu here. And I, let's see, how many people have accepted our friend requests since yesterday? Oh, a little, quite a bit, actually. So let's see, there's a Kakashi level 5, a couple Sakuras. 
couple of Naruto's. Anyway, we have a pretty good array of people there that have accepted our friend request. And that really is all there is to this place, actually. In check ID and search, you can add your own... Or you can look for your real-life friend's ID. There you have mine right there, so if you want to add me onto the game, feel free to do so. I'm probably going to keep Hinata as a leader for a while. And it doesn't really matter who your leader is, because there are no leader skills from what I've seen. And I don't think I've received any friend requests. Not that I know of, anyway. Uh, nope. So that really is all there is to it. The other menu is really all your options and everything else. Settings, support help, check and login count, terms of service, you know, all the other stuff. So now that with all that sudden dead out of the way, let's head on into a battle. So here in the story, every time you complete a chapter, you will get five ninja pearls. Now, right now, I am missing five in order to perform my actual summon. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to be hiding most of this information that is up at the top of the screen because if it's anything similar to how Dragon Ball Z Dokken Battle is, people are going to be able to exploit that information in order to steal your account, even though the game was literally just released, like seriously. But anyway, let's hand over into the preliminaries, which is where I currently am. Now, the game is following what I can see every single chapter within the game so far. I am not sure on filler arcs, though. But anyway, we need nice stamina. We have enough. Now this. This is by far the most interesting aspect of this game, in that you can actually play with multiple people at the same time, and each person brings along two characters into the team, and then when you switch turns controlling the characters that are currently going, and so on and so forth. Which is interesting. Now, currently yesterday, I was having problems running it because I was getting disconnected from the host multiple times. And earlier today, I was doing it, and someone did join in, but I took a call and that immediately disconnected the other person from the party. So it can work, but it appears you have to stay within the game completely in order to complete the game so that the person is not disconnected. So let's give it a try, shall we? So let's gather some friends here. Now the one at the bottom which is join this mission as friends is for you to actually go out looking for a team. Now the room ID setting, as you can see, you can set up room ID set, you can set it up for password and name and everything else so that your friends can find your own room. But right now we want people to randomly join our party. So let's keep Pinata. Sakan is our, currently our strongest character who does the most damage. So let's see what happens. Now let's hopefully I didn't just start the game there. No, there we are. So as you can see, up to three other players can join in. So let's give it a couple seconds or a few seconds and see if anybody joins in for this mission. Now the rooms are divided by missions. So I believe currently everybody is trying to farm Haku during his strike event. So that's probably where everybody is. So since nobody is going to join in... Oops, somebody had just joined. Unfortunate! Well, let's give it another try. Okay, so I give it about a minute and still nothing. So let's leave and head on in by ourselves. We guess a bit on the sad part, but this way I can show you the combat system and not have to worry about wasting other people's time. So, as always, we get to pick a friend, so who are we going to bring? We are lacking whatever Sasuke's element is, so we could bring him along. We also don't have anything for that one, so... So let's bring along this Kakashi right here. He's, he's a very decent character with an AoE ult. And there we go. You can finally come check to see you're bringing along the correct team. Uh, but, but because you only have one team, let's just head on in. And here we are. Now, right off the bat, you're going to notice something very interesting. We can move around. This is something no other game has done, and is basically the core concept of the game. Now, as you can see, that circle around Hinata is her attack range. As If we bring her close enough to an opponent, she will highlight him to say she can attack him. However, those lines that are going to Hinata from our other members, those are the field skills. Now, as you can see, if I get near Kakashi, the countercessor goes up, and if I go near Shikaku, the attack boost goes up. So if we want to do some damage, we want to be near Shikaku. And really, that is how it works. Now, the problem here is that you want to be closer to your allies in order to deal more damage and take less damage. However, you can attack multiple opponents, and they can attack you multiple times if you're too close. So right now, we're going to concentrate on this one right here. And yes... You can attack multiple opponents, and if an opponent you're attacking is within range of another ally, that ally will join in. 
And there are certain skills that say that when they join in for an ally, they deal more damage or have higher attack power or whatnot. So here we go. Now Kakashi should be able to finish this guy off. Now, as you can see on the top left right there, you will see the element wheel. Now this system follows the same as One Piece Treasure Cruise, in that there are three elements going in a rock, paper, scissors formation. And there are two elements that have it out for each other that don't take uh, increased damage from each other, so there's no way to properly block those elements. So, what do we have here? They are both the same element as Hinata. Unf oh, hold on. We do have somebody. So, Choji deals extra damage to those characters, so... Let's just put you right here. Now, the other very interesting about this game is that you can do this. You can replace their, your characters for their body character at any point during the turn. Which is very... It's actually a unique system that avoids overcluttering the screen and mix it so that you can actually prepare for almost anything. So, let's just fi finish this guy off. Now, as you can see, the red numbers indicate that Choji was dealing extra damage to the opponent and blue numbers mean that they are receiving or you are receiving less damage. How much? I believe the bonus and negative is plus 50% extra damage and I believe a minus 50% damage reduced when you block. Anyway, we have a minor boss here. Hey, it's Eno. Okay, so Eno is the same element as Sinata, so Choji is going to deal extra damage to her. So what we're going to do is we are going to set up an ambush here. So Hinata's ultimate that I activated by clicking on her portrait when she had enough chakra is that for five turns, she will avoid 1000 damage before weaknesses and resistances. So we're going to set her up there to try and lure Eno and her the rest of her allies closer to there. Ah, excellent, excellent. And now that that's set, we can actually do this. Come on. And we are attacking everybody, which is what we wanted. However, Eno is also about to attack as well. Hinata still has her ultimate, and Choji will take half damage. And as you can see, we absolutely destroyed the other two people. And Choji took half damage, and Hinata also took half damage as well. That is curious. Huh. I'm not really sure why she took less damage. Well, yeah, she, her barrier. Because her barrier reduces the damage to zero before a thousand damage, before damage, weakness, and resistance, it did that. So that's why it was blue. Now, an attempt for Kakashi to end this. There we go. Here comes the water dragon jutsu. He didn't end it. Now, let's end this with Sack on here. He does upwards of 2,000 damage, and everybody's going to attack as well. There we go. 4,000 something damage destroyed. But yeah. And that is really how long combat works. It's definitely interesting and it brings a lot of new stuff to the game, which is. Uh, which I haven't seen in any other game. Now, here, there are three different challenges for every mission. We completed all of them because they were pretty easy, honestly. The continues allowed, easy, complete within 20 turns, relatively easy. Reduce the boss HP to zero using Ninjutsu, easy. So as you can see, we just got some ramen there, some friend points, and some Ryo. And we got an uncommon character, a common character. So really only fodder here. So let's see if we can send him a friend request. It's full, obviously it's going to happen. So yeah, that is bad. That is how battles work. As you can see, it is definitely going to be interesting. Now something I wasn't able to show you there. Well, actually, I, we can show you. So let's event back out and show you the Haku Strike event. Let's do that, because that is actually interesting. Emergency missions. Now here we also have the standard uh, get awakening uh, items for X element, get training items for X element, and your standard strike missions. Now, currently there are two difficulties for Haku. It says C and B. Now, C is difficult enough if you're not, if you don't go in prepared. You can get absolutely destroyed by Haku because his ultimate is an AoE attack. However, I believe difficulties go higher than that because if you go to notice, event information, and we head on down here, you will see Sabuza there. If we click on this nose right here, you will see that it says that... Let's see, where is it? It is only available in A and B ranks. So his event is going to be a lot more difficult. Now we can start to prepare because he... Oh, oh dear. 
Now, Sabuza is one of the two elements that hate each other. So if you go in with people that deal lots of extra damage to him, he is going to deal lots of extra damage to you. So, yeah, that's going to be a little on the interesting side when that event comes out. But anyway, onto Haku's battle. So, solo mission. Now, I, as you can see, that is the Haku we are facing off against right there. And he is the same element as Sinada. So we want... There is nobody here that is strong against him. That is unfortunate. However, we do have a level 63 Itachi there. So we might as well grab him, because the higher level, usually the higher their stats. And he is a 5-star, so he should be relatively more powerful. Now, we can bring in some extra help here. So, who takes extra damage? Uh, nobody takes extra damage. However, we do need to bring in somebody that deals extra damage to him. So, we are going to drop Haku and bring in... Iruka here, so because he will also take uh, the reduced damage because he's of the opposite element. So that is going to be good. He's only in level 3, but he's really only here to tank and not deal damage. And with that, we are pretty much set. Let's start the mission. Now, during the story mission, you saw that we defeated the people that showed up, and some people showed up after you defeated them. So this is one of those tricks to the mission because sub-bosses can appear after you defeat lackeys. Which is what makes this uh, mission a little bit on the tricky side if you don't have the levels or the elements required. Now luckily, we, your entire team starts off with their ultimates ready, so what we're going to do... Is we're going to have Sakon completely destroy this guy right here. Now I believe they regain one chakra every turn. Can we get both of them? Yes we can, just barely! Good, good, and can Itachi get both of them as well? No, Itachi cannot get both of them, so he would do it here. Gang up on this guy, take him out. And yeah, that Itachi is very strong, dealing a thousand damage on normal attack, so it was definitely worth bringing him along. Now, that little bottle you see there is a health bottle. If you pick it up, it'll heal you a random amount. I have no idea if it's a percentage base or a number base, but that's what it's going to do. Now, we don't want to take a lot of super attacks here, or attacks here, so we're going to kill this guy with Shikaku's Shadow Strangle Jutsu here. He's going to attack us. Now, Itachi is going to attack him as well, along with everybody, because he decided to get in range of everybody. And that's good. Okay, can we pick this up and attack as well? Yes, we can. Pixel perfect! So as you can see, that little green bottle healed us for 391. And if you're taking a lot of damage, it might be worth trying to strategize around those bottles that show up. And that was only the first map out of three. Now here we're going to face up against these guys right here. And after these guys, the Gozu and Mezu brothers are going to show up. So we need to be prepared for that. So we need to kill as many people as possible here. Somebody got absolutely destroyed. Luckily, Itachi is hitting very hard. And Sakon can eliminate these last two here. That limits the damage we take. Ah, oh, he was missing just a little bit. So as you can see, because that guy is a fire element, I'm just naming him what I see on their symbol, he received extra damage from Itachi and Shikaku, but it also deals extra damage to them. So going with characters of that element can be... It's a, literally a double-edged sword there. Okay, now we need to eliminate somebody, so let's eliminate this guy here. There we go, that's one attack less we're gonna suffer. So let's bring Shikaku all the way up there and see if we can taunt him to attack him. And we did, excellent. Now Sak now Hinata deals extra damage to this guy here based on the elements, I think. Yes. And we are done with that part. And now onto the actual boss battle. Now, as you can see, Haku is going to start off the battle doing his ultimate every single turn on the first turn. Well, not every single turn, but definitely on the first turn. So what we need to do is we need to prepare and do as much damage as possible. So what we're going to do is do as much damage as we can to him and to his lackey back there. Unfortunately, we are going to suffer a attack right there. 
Now, uh, usually what I like to do on this one is have Hinata start off and taunt. And because her ultimate negates a lot of damage, I put her behind Haku and he attacks her. But now we are with Itachi, however, we are going to switch to over to Iruka Sensei here because he deals extra damage to Haku and takes less. And now Hinata, what are we going to do with you? Uh, Haku attacks in two turns, so we can do this and attack... Uh, we can't attack everybody, so let's just finish off that guy there. Okay, Mr. Choji, can you finish off everybody there? Well, probably not everybody, but definitely the lackey. Good damage right there. This is going to hurt a little bit. Because they're resistant, as you can see, from 600 to 300, so a lot of reduced damage there by being the proper element. Seven hundred damage, not bad. Uh, he's about Haku's about to do his ulti again, so let's proc Hinata's ultimate jutsu here, so she can be next to him for the extra kind of resistance and extra attack on Haku. And unfortunately, this Toji is not going to do ultimate, but damage is damage here. And we killed them, excellent, just enough. Now, in order to know if you got a character or not, uh, they drop a wanted poster, and if it's theirs, it'll drop him, it'll be dropped by them. Now, because the title of Mission Complete appeared very quickly, I did not know if you actually got him or not. The answer is no. Uh, strike character wanted posters are silver, as in very rare. Let's send a friend across here. And that is it. That is Naruto Ultimate Ninja Blazing. Now, as you can see, there are currently not that many characters. However, if they decide to delve into filler arcs, and once they hop over into, Sh into Naruto Shippuden, there were definitely a lot of characters. Now, how the power curve is going to happen here, I have no idea. Hopefully, it takes a long time before things start getting ridiculous, and we start getting the you must have this character or you're not going to beat this uh, scenarios, and so on and so forth. So the rewards you get at the end of your mission are here in your present box. Just accept all and you're done. So yes, thank you for watching. And we will see you next time for whatever shows up on the channel. Probably more... Lots of more mob mobile games because I'm playing a lot of them recently. But definitely more Deus Ex as well. And lots of other stuff. So we will see you next time.